Hey guys, and welcome back to another quick form video. In today's video, we're talking about Verizon's fast C-band finally being live. Of course, that's their 5G C-band. It's finally live today. Um, so today's January 19th, which is a Wednesday here. So they're finally live. And let's uh, see what um, controversies and, of course, benefits it has. So this is going to be brought to you by Verge, a really good website. Check them out. So I'd like to share information with you guys. So... And I'm, of course, not going to read everything. I'm just going to kind of skim through it and give you the basics of it. Of course, you guys know C-Band's going to be fast, fast internet. Not going to be the fastest, but it's going to be really fast internet for Verizon customers. So it says, I made that ongoing tussle with the FAA and airline industry. Verizon finally switched on their 5G C-Band, uh, which is its mid-band 5G deployment, which uses Spectrum. The company spent tons of billions of dollars to acquire in the C-band auction. So, the new faster level of 5G connectivity will significantly augment Verizon's 5G ultra wideband network, which until now has relied slowly on extremely fast but very hard to find millimeter wave spectrum. That's very very true. I remember when this came out. This is where you can get you know a gig down with their ultra wideband or millimeter wave, should I say? Uh. It was really, really fast. I mean, you get gig, maybe two, close to two gigs, but it was really hard to find. And then if that, you had to be basically looking at a tower or your phone almost facing a tower. And if you have any kind of obstructions like buildings or trees or anything like that, uh, you weren't going to get that full speed. So this is pretty cool that they're releasing more of it, um, you know, to try to help get faster internet. And, you know, with that, I believe there's going to be more technology being developed with that as well. So says mid-band 5G overcomes many of the hurdles that have made millimeter wave the brute of jokes from competitors like T-Mobile. That is that is true. I mean, like I said, nobody really can compete too much with their millimeter wave. But if you want that, uh, like I said, it's really kind of hard to find a good millimeter wave connectivity. And it's not widely available everywhere. Of course, T-Mobile was the first one to deploy 5G nationwide. But of course, theirs is not millimeter wave. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. It says it it's actually available indoors, which that's another thing with coverage. It was varying a lot with the millimeter wave. Like I said, if you were in a building or anything like that, it was kind of hard to get good coverage. It says customers with compatible phones should experience notable faster data speeds compared to Verizon's 5G nationwide network, which, of course, the nationwide network is more available, but it's not as fast. Um, it offers widespread signal, but with download upload, performance that in many cases isn't much better than LTE. So that's another thing. 5G nationwide is basically lower end of 5G, but it's available more uh, in more areas. Of course, it's not as fast as, you know, millimeter wave or even C-band or anything like that, but it is pretty fast or such, a, you know, a little bit better than LTE. It says in short, 5G is more to feel is about to feel a lot more real for Verizon customers that than it ever has before. Mid band is crucial element of Verizon's long term 5G, um, you know, to basically bridge the gap between slow and fast nationwide. So they really want to get this uh, available everywhere or as fast as they can because this is what they want. Of course, Verizon is a top dog in the cell phone industry here in the United States. I mean, they have the money to do it. They just, you know, need maybe the time and the clearance and everything to do it. So it's pretty cool. Let's look at some examples of C-Band Live in Claremont. So this is done with an iPhone 12 Pro Max inside a warehouse, guys. So this is a warehouse. Remember, inside a building, not um, not outside or anything like that. So it looks like down, uh, they're getting through speed test. Uh, down was 416. Wow. And then upload was 25.7. Upload, I would say, I mean, you can, you can possibly get that with 4G or just nationwide 5G. I've gotten that. But the download is definitely fast at 416. Remember, that's inside a warehouse, guys. So that's a bunch of metal and stuff going on. So that, that's really nice. Says so even on day one, the improvements are promising. Customers were quick to basically go to the Ryzen sub uh, Reddit on Wednesday to post a slew of Ookla speed test screenshot. So of course everybody want to share, Hey, you know, this is the kind of speeds that I'm getting. Um, and I have tested, uh, the 5g ultra wideband, um, from Verizon when I was, uh, in a major city for, 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 you know, just for travel. And it's definitely, I was getting about close to one gig. Uh, so that's pretty fast guys. Um, so 
It says uh, some of the screenshots were showing the down was topping around 500 to 800 megabits per second. In some cases, many are seeing an average download between 200 and 400, which honestly is plenty fast for a lot of people, guys. I mean, I mean, I, I guess if you're downloading games or or movies. Of course, you want the fastest internet, but I mean that's pr pretty fast. <laughs> It says which devices support Ryzen's new fast C band 5G and launched the list of supported phones and tablets in is fairly short, of course. Um, but here are some of them. So the iPhone 13, uh, the mini, the pro, the pro max, the 12, basically all the 13s and all the 12s. It looks like for iPads, you need uh, the iPad pro, uh, fifth gen, the 12.9 inch. Of course, it has to be a 5G compatible iPad pro 11, 11 inch. Uh, third gen iPad mini six gen for Google. You need the newest Google pixel six or the, the six pro for Samsung, anything from the S 21 up. So the S 21, 21 plus ultra Z fold and Z flip will be able to take advantage of it. I'm surprised they didn't mention the S 21 F E on um, that one is 5g compatible, but maybe they just don't have that chip. That's 22. Of course is going to be compatible. And they're saying that they're expected uh, to have 20 uh, more compatible phones by the end of 2022. So, like I said, I'm guessing the 20, the S22 and maybe the S21 FE. I'm not too sure. I got to do a little bit more research. It might be available there, but definitely the 22. So, where's the C-band? Verizon is saying um, they're supposed to show the C-band coverage map at launch. But I even checked that. I went through Verizon's website just to make sure that from the article. When they posted this article, it wasn't available yet and still is not available just yet. But it says, you know, with the whole fight with the FAA, maybe they're showing, you know, some resistance with that. Um, they don't want you to, I don't maybe they're just having issues with that. But, uh, of course, if you go to any major metro market, there should be some degree of C-band coverage in January. Of course, any big uh you know, cities, San Francisco, uh, you know, Raleigh, Durham, you know, Arlen, anything like that, any big city like that should have something like that. So it says the company has promised to reach more than 100 million people in 1700 plus cities around the nation with the faster flavor of 5G this month. So pretty, pretty cool, guys. Um, uh, he's saying right now the... You know, the writer of this article saying he's located in downtown Brooklyn and still writing on the slower 5G nationwide network as of midday Wednesday. So maybe they're still deploying it. Um, you know, they did turn on the switch, but maybe it's taking a little bit longer. Uh, so it says, how do I know if if I'm on Ryzen C-Band 5G, which is a good question. Ryzen C-Band 5G shares the same 5G ultra wideband indicator in your phone status bar. So if you look at on your Ryzen phone, it'll say 5G ultra wideband. Um, it's a good example right here. So it'll show 5G UW. So if you have that indicator, it's it's supposed to be the C band. So it says uh, that makes things a little confusing. But if you're suddenly and consistently seeing 5G ultra wide appear in places where you never have previously, that's basically evidence that the device is taking advantage of the 5G speed. So and like I was saying, how how fast is it really? Like I said, well, they're getting um, you know anywhere from 200 to 500 megabits per second, up to over 800. Just depends. The ultra wideband is the one that gets you one to two gigabits. Um, but overall, like I said, uh, it's it's pretty fast, guys. Going from two all the way to 800 range. That's a big range. So if you are maybe in a less congested area, probably gonna push them 800. You know. So of course, this is from. Uh, New York, so pretty cool. This is just 5G. Do you need to change your plan if you are on Verizon? It says not necessarily the new faster 5G is including Verizon's 5G Play More. So you have to have not just the basic one, you have to have the Play More and Do More to get the 5G, um, you know, the C band at least, and also get more unlimited plan. Ahead of the C-band rollout, Ryzen's slightly rebranded and tweaked those plans. Of course, they change it to play more, do more, and get more. Um, it says, with the top plan now offering truly unlimited 5G data, but if you're on a previous version of these plans, 
And since actual plans features have changed, in most cases, you'll automatically be rolled over to the new plans within two billing cycles. Wow. So within about two billing cycles, or about two months, you'll go ahead and just automatically roll over to the new plan, even if you didn't change it. it says the expectation to this is Verizon's entry level start unlimited plan, which does not include 5G ultra wideband whatsoever. So that's the exception. Of course, like I was saying, you have to get at least a more expensive unlimited plan with Verizon. They have uh, what does it look like? Three, well, four, four unlimited plans or so. And of course, if you guys don't know, they're having a big fight with uh, with 5G. Ooh, something happened with the camera. I don't know what happened there. So I don't know. It looks a little. Oh, there it goes. Come back. Sorry about that. Oh, went back. Whatever. So basically, what's the what's the whole airline safety thing? You know. So it says, don't expect the, to get C-band speeds at your local airport because, of course. They agree to not pop or turn on the switch near airports because that can be causing issues with the tower, um, you know, the terminal, the terminal, uh, the airport or the tower that, you know, communicates with airplanes and stuff that could be causing issues. So it says Verizon and ATT have uh, both agreed to delay the activation like of C-band 5G around many airports and are creating exclusive zones to address airplane related safety concerns that continue to rise by the FAA. So of course. Both carriers, AT&T and Verizon, they they want to get that C band up and running, but it looks like it's not going to be really available near airports. So, yeah, you know, if you're in an airport, even a big city, you might not see it kick on. So, pretty cool. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Like I said, you can read the whole article by going to the Verge. I like to just skim through it, so I don't take too much time and give you my honest thoughts. Like I said, I I have a Verizon phone as well. So I'm going to test it out and see how well it does. Um, right now in my area, I, there currently is no C-band activation just yet. I do have nationwide 5G, but I can tell you, uh, you know, I can get 100, maybe 200 sometimes with it, depending on congestion and stuff. But uh, the only time I've gotten ultra wideband um, is definitely in a major city, like a capital city or something like that. So pretty cool. So let me know in the comments below what you think, guys. Sorry if it. I sound a little fast, but, you know, I want to get this information out to you guys. And it's pretty cool. So shout out to The Verge for all this information and shout out to you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you.